a slave or a servant, listen here, that serves in the belly of a ship. And their assignment is to be a rower. A rower that propels a ship through the waters. Well, when Paul suggests that we ought to be servant as ministers who are under rowers, we should know at least that the servant and the rower does not determine the direction of the ship. That's right, that's right. Uh, no, not only do they not determine the, the direction of the ship, but nor do they determine the destination. Uh, but their position, all they do is roll underneath the deck of the ship. Now the person in charge of the ship is not on the deck. But the person that's in charge is on top of the deck. And now you and I know, amen, metaphorically, that we use, amen, that Jesus Christ is the captain well. of our ship. Get on board. Uh -huh. Get on board. Jesus is the captain of my ship. All I am is just a role. Uh, all, all I do, ministers, pastors, servants, is I roll. Uh -huh. And understand that my back is always turned. I can't see where I'm going. All my job to do is to roll. Please stop.
us observe that we are stewards. Stewards. Uh, to be a steward here means to manage the affairs of a household. To manage, to dispense, to order. To regulate, uh -huh. yeah. to manage the affairs of a household. The steward is a person who is given the responsibility of managing the household of someone else. Let me, and since I said, let me throw this in there. That means you don't run nothing. Well, well. I said that a steward position is to manage the household of someone else. Sorry for getting personal. Pastor Harris, you don't run nothing. Now let me help you. Cedar Grove, you don't run nothing either. Sometimes you just got to make it plain because some, sometimes stuff just go over folk's head. And I just have to tell you like it is. It's a shame that folk come to God's house and think they run stuff. From the pulpit to the door. You don't run a thing. It's a shame folk come to God's house looking at they watch talking about I got stuff to do. Why did you come in the first? This God's house. Preach. Preach, Reverend.
to be faithful. Right. And we function in two roles as ministers and stewards, but there is a different level of accountability for the steward. The steward was the one, amen, let me back up now, was the one that had a special position. Y'all remember, I, I don't know nothing about these days, but I was taught, y'all remember the plantation where you had two categories of slaves. You had the field slave, you had the house slave. Can I say this? I, I don't want to hurt nobody. Here, here we see this picture. The stewards were the one that labored in the house of the master. The house slave were, were the one that had a close relationship with the master. Now, 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 now when Paul was talking with the minister, the minister's job was structured around the movement of the ship. Y'all, I promise you ain't gonna keep you long. I'm, I'm heading to my finish. The minister's job was structured around uh, the ship being an underworld. Y'all seen the movie, Ben Hur? And, and, and you know there was some Slaves in the bottom of the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And they had chains on the legs. Yeah. And all of them had sitting there with a row. Yeah. And they were to row in the direction, amen, that the slave master would yeah. tell them to go. Yes. In other words, the slave master was the one that would keep the beat. Yeah. And they would have to move by the beat of the slave master. If the slave master said, turn left, they turn left. If the slave master said, turn right, they turn right. He said forward, they went forward. He said back, they went back. The slave master was the one that looked over and, and observed the slaves to make sure there was none that got tired uh, there was none that was weak uh, there was none that got sick it was a slave master's job to observe the slave well, I, I'm talking about the ministers, the minister's job was a slave master job he was to observe the slave that they would not get weak that they would not get tired. But then we look at Paul when he talks about the steward. Uh, yet the steward in the house, the steward was the one, again, that had, amen, the close relationship with the master. And I mean that in the morning, you know, when the slave would come in the house, the slave didn't say, Master, how you doing? But the slave would say, Master, how us doing? They were connected to the master. Oh, Y'all don't want to hear this. Y'all don't want to sit down. You know, they said, Master, what us going to eat? And, 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 and the master would come up with a, with, with, with a list of, of chores that they would have to do and he would go over those chores and tell them everything that they need to do and, and he would leave and go out and at the end of the day he would return back to see that everything was done amen that was supposed to be done I stop here today to tell you one day Jesus is going to come back and he's going to come back Harris to, to she if we've been faithful. That's right. Somebody said faithful over a few things. That's right. And y'all know the word that when it says that if you've been faithful over a few things, I'll bring you up and I'll make you ruler over many. I'll stop here today and tell you that God is looking for some faithful people. God is looking for 
some faithful servants in the house. He's looking for some faithful ministers, some faithful students. That's right. Yes, sir. I want you to understand that the slaves that worked, amen, in the house, that this was a unique bond with the slave and master, and that one day, as I stated, Jesus is coming back. Yes. How does God want us to manage? We manage God's household with a vision. A vision that must be received, not one you create. God told Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain. God told Habakkuk that a man to write the vision and to make it plain. I want you to understand that the vision did not start in Habakkuk 2, but it started in Habakkuk 1. Uh -huh. In other words, vision is birthed out of burden, and God releases vision that matches the burden. Yeah. Habakkuk had a burden for the people. Yeah. Amen. And God began to give him a vision that matched that burden. Yeah. You will never be successful in the ministry if you don't have a burden for the people. God does not release vision Amen. The crowds. He don't release vision to committees. Well, he don't release vision to deacon boards, and the trustee boards. But I want you to understand that God releases vision to the man or woman of God whose mind is open to the heart of God and for the burden of the people. And that's when God speaks vision. Y'all don't hear me? I stop here today to tell you that it's never a vision that you can do by yourself. So you got to take it and receive it and then release it. I said you got to take it, receive it, and then release it. I tell you, sometimes my brothers and my sisters, it get hard, yeah, when you're trying to work a vision from the Lord but I stop here today to tell you that God is able Well, well. I said he's able amen to carry you through <laughs> it's not up to you to, to wonder how you're going to grow what it is that God has planted you here but I stop here today to tell you that all oh, your job is to do is to sow into someone's life. Well, I tell you, sometimes, amen, it get hard when the people are stubborn, when the people are stiff-necked, when the people want to do whatever they want to do. But I stop here today to tell you that God got your back. I stop here today to tell you that God ordained you. Yeah. And that God, yeah, anointed you. Yeah. That God has placed you here to be the plan. Yeah. That you don't have to worry about the increase. Yeah. So many times uh, we worried about the increase. Yeah. But I stop here, Harris, to let you know that all you gotta do is plant, yeah. Plant the word, yeah. Yeah, yeah plant the word yeah. in their hearts. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, the seed will fall down yeah, upon stony ground. Yeah. But don't you worry, yeah, because we serve a God yeah, that is able. Yeah. How many know he's able? Yeah. How many know he's able? Yeah. Yeah, and he knows yeah, how to water, yeah, how to water the ground. Yeah. You don't have to worry yeah, about the water.
Lord you don't have to worry about the increase but we serve a God that's got the water we serve a God that know how to give the increase I stop here today to tell you that you ought to just bow down on your knees and call on the Lord and I know that he will he'll water the ground he'll soften up the stony hearts of the people so keep on pastor keep on planting the word keep on preaching keep on teaching you ain't got to fight because the battle is not yours but it belongs to the law yeah Lord but you just look to the law and he'll bring the water I don't know about you but I've had some dry places in my life I've had some ups and downs in my life 